Oh, hey there, Skippers, and welcome back to another episode of our brand new series, Sub Sundays. I am Captain Tirak of the USS Sunfish SSN 649, a Sturgeon class attack submarine. Last episode, we uh, had to go and try and stop an amphibious landing, and we spent two hours on that mission, and I gotta say, that's a little bit more than what I had originally planned for what Sub Sundays was gonna be. But uh, the format is what it's going. Whatever, however much time it takes is what it's going to be. We're going to do one mission every single time. And if it takes two hours, it takes two hours. We had uh, quite a bit of fun at the first hour going around dueling with a frigate and a destroyer and uh, managing to best both of them in torpedo combat. And uh, then we spent about an hour hunting down some uh, enemy transports and that was not nearly as fun. Unfortunately, we failed the mission. Apparently, you only get one shot once you actually find the enemy group to take them out. And uh, by the time we got out of that mission, we were pretty banged up. I think our hull was down to 41%. We were down to like three torpedoes. We had two jam tubes. Things were not great. Uh, so we had to come back to Holy Lock, or Holly Lock, however you pronounce it, in order to uh, refit, rearm, reload. And while we were in transit, we got a mission to stop some Spetsnaz from landing uh, in Iceland, I believe. Unfortunately, the moment I loaded back into this save, uh, they... The Icelandic commandos completed their operation, so the Spetsnaz have landed in Iceland and caused damage. So uh, this popped up pretty much immediately. So, well, we're back at port at Holy Lock, so it's almost like starting a brand new campaign, except, you know, we're behind a couple of objectives now. But we are repaired, we are rearmed, we have stuff again, and we have a brand new mission from Cobb Sublant. So, let's get this show on the road with our brand new orders. From Cobb Sublant to USS Sunfish, SSN 649, Info, Sinkland Fleet, Top Secret, Subject, Mission Orders, num number 0-652.682.545, 12th of December, 1968, 0500 hours, so good early morning launch. Tactical Situation, Intel reports that a wolf pack of enemy diesel electri electric attack subs will sail within the next seven days and attempt to transit the Guk area. They must be sunk before they get the opportunity to cause mayhem along the North Atlantic convoy routes. Intelligence believes the pack may consist of one or more Juliet-class cruise missile submarines and an escort of Foxtrot or Romeo-class attack submarines. Primary objective, locate and sink the attacking enemy submarines. Secondary objective, there is none. Avoid anti-submarine warship patrols, weapons-free MCOM radio silence. Funny thing, I'm actually uh, re-listening to uh, a book called Red November which uh, talks about four Foxtrot submarines as they try and get to Cuba. Uh, very good book. At least I thought, think it is. So, <coughs> oh boy, what was that? So cast off, anchors away, let's get underway, and we're going to pause with the uh, spacebar key, because that's one of the cool things that happened in the patch. And we're going to look for the Guk area, because I do not know what the heck Guk is. Uh, the map does not scroll nor pan. So, at this point, my plan is to simply find the enemy. Uh, review orders. Center click brings this menu up. So, where is Gyuk? Like, what is Gyuk? I, I don't know a whole ton about this area of the water. So, Gyuk is not known to me. So, let's just get underway. We'll see what we come across. And, uh, maybe I'm blind, maybe I'm missing the mark. But I'm going to assume that he's my, uh, he's my sub-target. So we're going to steam over at maximum speed. And an event has just popped up. The Netherlands are attacked. This morning, Warsaw packed troops crossed the borders into the Netherlands. Spearhead divisions surged directly for many bridges, railway crossings, and airfields in what seems to be a well-prepared and orchestrated attack. Satellite photos of Amsterdam show sides of significant damage to civilian structures and housing areas. Red Cross representatives have urged Soviets to arrange safe corridors for refugees and emergency supplies. The Soviet offensive is putting severe pressure on Allied forces as NATO tries to consolidate. The Soviet fleet has gradually worked its way into the Atlantic and is now posing a severe threat to NATO sea, sea lanes. Should NATO reinforcement and resupplies be delayed or stopped, then the ground war in Europe may come to a quick end. I think that's the campaign warning us that we need to get our shit together. So, uh, let's go after these subs. They're diesel electrics. Uh, at least that's what they're reported as. Con Sonar! We have a new sonar contact bearing 120, designate Sierra 1. Our depth is 150 feet. Our heading is 035. Our speed is 10 knots. Local conditions, scattered gentle breeze, very weak surface duct, very weak thermal layer at 188 feet. So, uh, all hands, man your battle stations. And we will immediately rig for ultra quiet and start listening around. So, what have we got? 
contact Sierra 1. Let's go up to signature right now. And it's not a humpback whale. Oh, they changed the screen now. Now I have to click these things. Uh, Charlie SSGN? No, they said... Maybe, actually. Those lines match up pretty darn nicely. Uh, 10 degrees right rudder. And uh, let's start coming uh, around to this submarine contact. This could be a Victor? Probably not. What are we getting here? A whiskey? That's not what's in our briefing. Back to F1 command. We do not have him on visual, so we do not have a proper solution. We're at 34%. Uh, do we have any idea on depth? No, we do not. Sea floor is 444 feet. Crap. So uh, we got to be careful about that. Torpedo evasion is going to be kind of difficult. I'm not seeing what I want to see. Where is it? Come on. There's got to be some more narrow band stuff that comes out of this. That's not it. Sierra 1 can't be a surface contact. But it matches up so many boats. Jeez. I don't want to. I don't think it's an SSGN, because N tells me that it's a nuclear boat, right? I don't think that's what it is. I want to say whiskey. Let's lock in whiskey. Uh, con contact Sierra One is classified as a whiskey. We have 47% solution on that, so I think we're pretty accurate on that. Uh, at this time, he cannot hear us, and if he were to start pinging, he would not know we're there. Range, 4.5 thousand yards. Uh, he is just below the layer. So, let's drop down just a bit. Depth control, make your depth uh, 190 feet. Let's try and get some more good data on this guy. going to run our first... Uh, TMA leg. And yes, I have started watching Jive Turkey, and I'm trying to learn submariner's lingo, even though my whole deal is mostly flight sims. So, <laughs> trying to equate the two, not quite working out in my head so much. Coming below the layer, and let's hold here at about, what, 192 is where we're holding? I don't hear anything, not getting anything, no pings. We've got a course, he's going 210, solution is 61%. And he is doing eight knots. Now I don't know if this arrow means he's doing eight knots and going down, eight knots and holding steady. But uh yeah, we're in a pretty good position. Let's turn in on him. Come ten degrees. Signature. And we will increase speed to two thirds maneuvering. That takes us off ultra quiet. Makes it a little a little louder. But uh I think we're in good shape. His passive is only uh, negative seven at this point. So let's get our turn towards him. And we're going to start driving towards his baffles. A nice deaf area behind him where he wouldn't be able to hear us if we were like ripping forward at maximum speed. So uh, bearing is 133, so he will be somewhere along here. Oh, slow to one third. Go ultra quiet. His passive is uh, negative four, so it went up. <laughs> And now our passive is negative 15 again. Okay. So uh, we can't chug too fast towards this guy. We are pretty close. We're at, uh, we're at 4.4 thousand yards. This is... This is pretty much Mark 37 torpedo range. 61% accuracy. It's bearing 135. Course is 224. Speed is 8 knots. Range 4.3 thousand yards. Solution accuracy is 61%. Okay, let's come... Right rudder, 15 degrees. We're going to come to a bearing of uh, 140. We're going to do this so that we can get some uh, contrast in what we're seeing on sensors. Do we got anything else out here yet? No, we do not. So we're not hearing anybody else at this time. But we did have to get mighty close to this whiskey in order to hear him. Just sort of skulking along going slow, letting this work itself out. We are really close. Oh, 
although, you know, back during the Cold War, American submarines got even closer. In fact, uh, I believe it was USS Drum who had a, uh, a near miss, or perhaps even a hit, with uh, when it was trailing a Soviet submarine. So yeah, this is uh, this is nothing to an experienced submariner, which I am not. So keep coming around. Okay, he's dead ahead of us. I want to come course one four zero. Five degree rudder. One three eight. One three nine. Target is dead ahead. Course one four zero. Okay, so he's doing two two five. So we are pretty much at a right angle to him right now. Keep skulking along. 76% solution accuracy. I like it. Come on, give me more. Tell us everything. Tell us everything there is to know. 78. When it gets to 80, I'm going to start coming to starboard more. We're going to... Uh, we'll come right to 160. That's 80%. So, 10 degrees, starboard. 10 degree turn to starboard. One thing I have noticed, because I have... Eh, no, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to admire the beauty of this submarine. And remember that this series is much more chill than our more frantic Starfleet Command series. Okay. Negative 14 passive, so... He's starting to... Oh, we got a solution. 86% confidence. We have him, 95%. Let's take a look. He's a whiskey class. New contact bearings. Uh, 079, Sierra 2. I'm also going to suggest contact Sierra 2 is a whiskey. Okay, focus on Sierra 1 for now. Uh, but be aware of Sierra 2, assumed whiskey. And oh, we're almost to our, uh, almost to where we want to be on that rudder. Four more degrees. Conditions, yeah. So how far are we away from Sierra 2? Sierra 2 Whiskey is 14,000 yards. So Sierra 1... Sierra 1, we are at 6.3 thousand yards. So I would like to get a little bit closer than that before we start lobbing torpedoes this way. Sierra 2 Whiskey is much closer. Estimate 5.6 thousand yards. Signature, we are negative 13 on passive, but we are starting to get dangerous. Uh-oh. We're in a bit of a pickle now. I don't want to go deep on this guy. I want to stay up here. Oh, he's above the layer. Okay, that works in our favor. So, with him above the layer... Come on, Rust. Uh, with him above the layer, he can't hear us all that great. We are 188 feet, we're at 192, so we should be, I think, we are at the, um, the shadow zone. So, beneath the layer enough. Range 6,000 yards, range 7.1 thousand yards. 38% accuracy on this guy. Signature 12 passive. Back to us. Dive officer, make your depth 200. Coming down. 200, 201, 202. He's increased speed. Sierra 2 Whiskey is at 8 knots and climbing. Conditions, he's still above that layer. 41% solution on this guy. Maintaining a 95% solution on Sierra 1 Whiskey. I can probably swim it out of the tube if you want here. So we'll prep a starboard side shot. Okay. Preparing to fire torpedo tube 2, bearing 175. Uh, activate range is... I want to go 4.3 thousand yards. Firing tube 1. He's 
Mark 37s scare the crap out of me when they go out. If you were, if you watched till the end of the last episode, we, uh, we fired a Mark 37, and it got to here in front of our nose and blew itself up. So I get nervous whenever I launch these things. Uh, how are we doing? Zero two whiskey is still, still relatively good on us. He's at a negative 10, but he's getting a one pass, or one active. So if he catches wind of us and starts pinging, uh, he's not going to detect us yet, but he's starting to get up there. We got a torpedo heading out towards Sierra 2 Whiskey. Holy crap, this has a 40 minute runtime? Our torpedo has a 40 minute runtime. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, Sierra 2 Whiskey is doing 3 knots. Solution is 64%, 65%. This guy, I hope he doesn't have a clue. He's doing 8 knots, maintaining speed and bearing. Or not speed and bearing. Course and speed. Uh, Sierra 2 Whiskey has, we have a good course on him. 70% accuracy. So he is off to our port side. Somewhere around there. Sierra 2 Whiskey is still above the layer. Sierra 1 Whiskey is maintaining depth. So, not a threat. It's possibly a threat. Is he? He's continuing straight south, I believe. Keep an eye on Sierra 1 Whiskey, but we also got to keep in ear open for everything else. I don't think a diesel-electric boat can outrun a Mark 37. So the thing about diesel-electrics, and they actually do have a point of still existing. So World War II uh, and World War I submarines, they're... crap. Okay, so we have a good... good solution <laughs> on Mr. Sierra 1. So, uh, let's... all stop maneuvering? No, we'll continue at one-third. Wait for all to quiet but we are going to have to keep a steady eye on this guy. Uh, so back in World War I and II, you had... The way your submarines worked is you stayed on the... It was mostly a boat that could sink. So it stays on the surface, it burns diesel engine, it's, it's shaped for sort of going on the surface. And then when it goes underwater, it activates batteries. So when nuclear submarines come around, they become like underwater spaceships. So they're always underwater, they're not designed to be above the water, and they really don't do that all that well. Um, nuclear boats, because we've got a nuclear reactor on board, we always have to keep that thing cool. So for almost all nuclear boats, you've got water pumps that are constant, or coolant pumps that are constantly in action, that are constantly pumping water through and coolant through the reactor. So you're never quite entirely silent, because your reactor itself is making noise. A diesel electric boat, the batteries don't make that noise. They don't have those pumps, so they're quieter. They're absurdly quiet when they're running underwater. And uh, that that can be a great advantage. They're great at sneaking up on things. But the problem is those batteries mean they only have a couple of days maybe of underwater endurance. And they don't have all kind of all the kinds of wonderful systems that we have because we have basically unlimited power. So air conditioning, not really a thing on a diesel electric boat. Uh, I like I said uh, earlier, I've been uh, re-listening to the book uh, Red November, and they talk about four Foxtrot submarines armed with nuclear-tipped torpedoes that were sent down to the Bahamas, Cuba, er Cuba area during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And one of the things that they constantly describe is that the temperatures in the submarines in the warm waters just gets absurdly hot. I'm talking temperatures in, like, the 40 degrees Celsius and higher. So uh, he's very quiet, but they don't have the endurance to stay underwater, and they have to constantly come up to snorkel. And... Uh, so they can run their diesel engines and work on their and uh, recharge their batteries. How are we doing with this run? The weapon is 1.6 thousand yards for me. I want to shoot another torpedo out the port to to kill this guy. Do we not have a good solution on this guy? Sierra to whiskey. We have a firing solution. We can do it, and it is on our port side. So we'll keep that in mind. Keep this tube selected. 
So we're, we're going to see kind of what this guy does here at the Whiskey. If he makes his course 270, we'll start to get worried. He's turning. He's turning. We're going to all stop. We're going to make like a hole in the water. Because I want him to go ahead of me. And at this speed, we're probably going to meet each other. Which is not what I want at all. So we're going to sit here, very quiet. Reduce the flow noise over the hull. There we go. See, now that we're sitting super quiet, now we're starting to get those narrow bands that are telling us about whiskey. And that's the advantage that he's got with that electric engine. He just does not make a lot of noise when he's underway. Well, when he's underwater underway. Uh, the weapon is going quite well. So he will activate at about 2,000 yards. Let's take this and extend it a bit. We're maintaining a wire, which is good, which means we can give constant updates. Uh, it's doing course 195. Taking him this away. Sorry about that. I have allergies, and it has become summertime, and so, uh, yeah, not as much fun as you might think. If you have allergies, then you know exactly what's happening. If you don't have allergies, you lucky jerk with your good genetics in your body that doesn't decide that it's going to, like, try and kill itself because of some pollen. Ugh. We are... I kind of want to say that we're in a great position to shoot on CR2 Whiskey. Oh! He's pinging! He got... He got a whiff of it. CR1 Whiskey has no chance of detecting us. CR2 has very low chance. But, uh, if he comes to port more, that might give him a shot. Zero One Whiskey is at nine knots. Torpedo's about to go active. That whiskey's turning. Zero Two Whiskey is at course 203. If he hits course 230, I'm telling the, this, uh, I'm telling our torpedo to go active and fight on its own. And we're gonna turn into that guy. We're doing zero speed. So we're just sitting here. Whiskey 2 has a 2 on active cone. Whiskey 1, we are about to hit torpedo active. Stand by. Torpedo go active. Torpedo is homing. Torpedo is in search pattern, not homing. Sierra 1 is cavitating. Come on, you gotta see that. CR1 not able to detect us. CR2 also not able to detect us. Come on. Torpedo is in search mode. Has no target as of yet. Let's keep an eye on this whiskey. See what he does. Come on, he's cavitating. He's making all kinds of noise. You're in passive. This should be easy for you. I assume. I don't know how good these Mark 37 torpedoes are at all. He's put your stern. He's put a stern to you. Come on, pick it up. Pick it up. So the torpedo is now in his baffles. How's CR2 doing? CR2 is at 3%. Is three on active, so still not able to detect us. Come on. He was looking right at him while he's pinging, and he's cavitating. We'll let that torpedo get closer before we tell it to go active. Sierra 2 Whiskey is being in his arc, but he is not. He doesn't know we're here. He doesn't know where we are yet. We're only a couple thousand yards apart. Yeah, we're 3.9 thousand yards. Two whiskey. Oh, uh, they're about a thousand yards apart. Come on. You should see him by now. 
He's cavitating, man. Home in on that. He's literally blowing up the water behind him. He's so loud. Sierra 2 Whiskey is turning in a direction that may put him towards us. Darn 37. It's blind as a bat, yo. Come on, I gotta pay attention to this whiskey as well. Hi, buddy. <laughs> you don't see us. We're invisible to you. Come on. Oh, you're looking right at him. Getting to a point where I may just put him active. Because he is getting to that point. He passes within the cone, we're gonna tell this torpedo to go active. Just a little bit closer. A little closer. Keep an eye on that whiskey. He's curling right around to us. A little bit further. He's dropped a noisemaker. Torpedoes and countermission homing. Torpedo is doing a circular run. No, no he's not. Torpedo has acquired. Oh, uh, no, Torpedo lost it. Torpedo to go active. Come on. Torpedo has acquired. Port rudder. Two degrees. Oh, where'd he go? Wish he's going quiet. Zero out the rudder. Come on. Find him. Okay, we can't afford to get target fixated on this guy anymore. Alright. Target whiskey, Sierra 2. Noisemaker bearing 173. So I think he's on. Prepare tube one. We'll go with a thousand yard run. Bearing one one one. Torpedo away. And we broke the wire in torpedo one. Tube apparently this is tube three, I think. All right, full rudder to port. We hit the whiskey. Okay, one sunk. Boom. So let's turn to port. 30 degrees, doing five knots. Uh, reload. Reload. He's got an eight on his active. He's, that's not going to be good enough to detect us. Now, if we get nose on, I think this drops by a quarter. He's got one on passive. Target Sierra 2 Whiskey is our primary target. Reloading Torpedo Tube 1. Come on, get bow on. He's doing course 214, bearing 97. Now that torpedo is going to go on a silent run. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to go active at any point. We didn't set that properly. So he's doing eight knots. We're nose on this guy. So uh, if what I've been reading is correct, this has been reduced by uh, one quarter. So it's actually about one. Tubes one and three are fully reloaded. It seems weird to me that it goes one, two, three, four, apparently. 
but I would imagine that it will go one, two, three, four. Whiskey is cavitating. Torpedo has gone active. Although, you know, this is a Mark 37. They're not exactly good at this sort of thing. So we're going to set both of them so that they, uh, so that they run active. Okay, come 15 degrees on the rudder. Let's get a nice starboard turn going. If he's cavitating, he's not listening. And is he about to put us in his baffles? I think he is. Increased speed ahead two-thirds. So he's above the layer. So were we, were we trying to hunt whiskeys? <laughs> I should really remember my orders better. Okay, he's doing 11 knots. He's dumped the noisemaker. So he's worried about that torpedo. Lucky for him, the torpedo isn't going active. Signature... Is he coming back around? Come on, little Mark 37. See him. Uh, continue right turn. 2,000 yards. Oh, this is going to get ugly. And he's slowed down. Ultra quiet. Did that torpedo? That torpedo is in terminal. It's acquired. I think. Like, I know we're not getting proper updates on the whiskey. But, you know, the whiskey's going in a straight line. Whiskey's back. Torpedo seems to have good run. He's dropped another noisemaker. Oh, we have no control over this torpedo. We have to rely on it. The torpedo's rejected the noisemaker, I think. Oh, he's making a turn to starboard. Let's see if this goes to him. Come on. Come on, Mark 37. You can do it. I believe in you. Faith, come on, do it, do it. We don't have good track. Yes, it's a hit. Oh, she's hit. She's hit, she's sinking. That's it, Sierra 2 Whiskey sunk. Nice. So, helm, head one thirds, staying ultra quiet. Diving officer, make your depth, depth, one five zero feet. Heading to depth one five zero feet in preparation to go periscope. You know, when I first started this game, it was like we should never go periscope. Periscope is dumb and evil, right? But apparently, that is the thing to do, and it's totally normal. So we are learning all kinds of stuff. So steadily coming up managed to take out two submarines. They're diesel electric boats. So, uh, there is... They're not, like, amazing. It's a very weak layer, a very uh, weak duct up here. So we're coming up. So, excellent. Two Mark 37s fired, both Mark 37s hit. A much, much better result than what we had last time, where we fired like a ton of Mark 37s and Mark 16s and couldn't get the broads out of a bar. So this time we had good solutions, we uh, waited until we got a lot closer, and we handled things a lot better, I feel. Okay, five on the ballast. 60, 59, 58, 57, come on, 55 feet, going for five zero feet, 3, 2, 1, 50 feet. Okay, raise the USM mast. 
Signal strength, nada. Up scope. Night vision on. Do a quick peek. Okay, we got nothing. Down scope. Down in the ESM mast. Okay, let's go for 200 feet. So if I were an enemy submarine, would I be further south than Whiskey 1 was, or further north than Whiskey 2 was? I'm not really sure, because I think they were traveling in convoy. And I think there will be at least a third submarine out there. I might be wrong, but that does seem like it would make sense for a third submarine to be somewhere out there. So let's get below this layer. Uh, we're going to go to 250, actually, because we want to get we want to get out of the shadow zone so that we can hear all around. We don't want to be within 30 to 50 feet of this layer, because that's where sound stop or underneath this layer, because that's where sound just attenuates completely away. And sensors become worthless. You're invisible, but you can't hear anything. It's sort of like Star Wars version of uh, cloaking devices. Okay. Five degrees on the planes. And zero out the planes. Oh, I'm so I'm so happy. I'm so happy with, about these hits. Ballast to zero. The floor is not exactly, um, you know, reliable here. Two whiskeys here, one whiskey, both are dead. So let's increase speed ahead two thirds. Uh, secure from ultra quiet. Now let's get moving. Don't know where anybody is. We didn't see anybody up top. And there might not be anybody. So we're going to trundle around a little bit. We'll trundle a little bit around the area and then we will leave. So, F9. Anybody? Anybody home? Oh, that's creepy. Not going to lie. In some ways, it's kind of sad. Like, I cannot think of a worse way to die in the military than in a submarine. To think that you're going down in a steel coffin and you can't get out of it. So now that we have that awful thought in our heads, let's keep hunting around. Uh, come to... Oh, no. Come to course... Uh, I want to say... 050. 20 degrees right here. We're gonna listen. We're gonna listen and hope we pick up something. <sighs> like I get the point of diesel electrics in this era. They're they're much cheaper to build than nukes. But just, you can look at the shape of the hull. And you see how it's kind of like knife bladed? That's because it's designed to basically run on the surface. Like, yeah, Cold War era diesel electrics are way more advanced than what they had in World War II, but it, a diesel electric is still a sub that sinks, or still a ship that sinks. And it's not like we are, which is truly at home underwater. I mean, when they ran that evasion pattern, I don't think they're capable of doing more than 11 knots. This torpedo, the Mark 37, it does 26. I mean, it's one knot faster than we are, but these guys can't even reach half our speed. But the Soviet Union decided that uh, quantity had a quality all of its own. 
we could not build nearly as many nuke boats as they could build nuke boats and diesel electrics. I don't think it worked out for them. Keep listening. Anything out there? Slow slightly. Nothing. Increase back to 10 knots because we can hear at it. Unlike the 1984 campaign, we don't have to worry about a towed sonar array. Ha! I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Based is the enemy. That is the key question. Okay, up on the planes. Oh, the layer's gone. There's no layer here anymore. So what you hear is what you get. get too close to this because uh because it would not be cool. Yeah let's do zero zero zero. I think we can call that a mission. I think that'll be a mission for us. Maybe this was the escort. Maybe this is what we were supposed to hit. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, there's vessels nearby. So no, we are still in this fight. Slow to five knots. Let's get a listen out. Sierra 3 contact, come on, give it to me. Increase to two thirds, ten knots. Electric boats are, after all, very quiet, very difficult to hear. Cut to port. Clear our baffles. Somewhere out there, there's another submarine. It's, in, it's within 15,000 yards. Let's assume this was the back of the convoy. Yeah, there's definitely a ship still out here. So if we assume this was the back of the convoy and this is the direction of travel, then uh, let's trace the line down this coast. 
These boats were trending along at about six knots when they were under covert. And nobody's cavitating, and they were hanging pretty... They were hanging pretty, uh, pretty shallow. Once we get past Sierra One Whiskey, we will uh, pop up above the layer, take a look. It means we're going to have to slow down. Because uh, we start cavitating pretty darn quick up here. We know they're sunk because on both of our both of our readouts here it says it's got the sunk ship icon. I know there was a big bug that used to happen a lot where you'd torpedo someone, they'd hit the uh, they'd hit the bed of the ocean and then they'd just sit there and still be alive firing torpedoes at you. Which as you can imagine is not a very fun experience. Drifting along. Silent Guardian. If we run into this, into another submarine and it's heading away from us, we can sprint at it. Because uh, we'll be in his baffles. Nobody's pinging. Passing whiskey now. Yep, that vessel's still there. I don't think they have a shot on us. Zero Two Whiskey apparently has a great view of us. <laughs> sea floor is at 444 feet still, so not where I would like it to be. I would like it to be deeper so that we can evade more with higher speed. stopped, they can hear us out to 4,000 yards if we're doing 10 knots. It's kind of impressive if you think about it. Come on, Sonar, find me my next contact. Listen good and hard. I got a question. Maybe some of you might know the answer to this, because we have gotten some new people to the channel th thanks to uh, the Sub Sundays. Why red? Like, I like the color red and all, but I've noticed that on su American submarines we have black tops and red bottoms, and I'm just wondering why. Like, I'm sure I could find it if I went, like, searching for the answer, but I'm certain there's some one of you out there who's much more knowledgeable about these things who can obviously tell me just super quick. So, if you know, why do American submarines have black tops and red bottoms? Just idle curiosity, something that we're thinking about as I'm trundling along here. Still nothing. Still no contacts. Torpedoes are hot and ready to go. We've only used two of them. See? We still have nine. It's great. In fact, I'm tempted to reload these tubes as well. that other whiskey? Did he stop sort of like venting and thus despawned? No, because that one's still there. We didn't really have a great solution on the uh, on the first whiskey when we hit him. He stopped and tried to avoid the uh, torpedo that way, but it did not work out for him at all. It's kind of funny that uh, initially we had it in passive homing and he was dumping noisemakers and cavitating all like all over the place and then when we switched it over to active homing suddenly he decided that he wanted to stop and try and make like a hole in the water which seems like the wrong response to me okay let's go up and slow to one third 
pass above the layer. Listening, listening, listening. Got no new contacts. There's still vessels nearby. We're going to stay up here just a little while longer. At two thirds, we can maintain this. Okay, that's good to know. And back down. Only at two five zero. Keep us just under the shadow zone. There's a lot of water out there. Uh, we only have so good a view of it. It is 1968 after all. Our sonar only works so well. Not the uh, 1984 campaign where you can see all over the place. And if we're hunting diesel electric boats, that makes this double hard because like I said, underwater diesel electric boats are holes in the water even when moving. Now they can't move fast, so they ain't quick holes in the water, but they're pretty hard to hear. maneuvering. I don't want to sprint because I don't know. I don't want to sprint because I don't want to stumble onto somebody because these guys are super quiet. Like if we were fighting noisy boats, like, you know, an alpha class, which can do 42 knots, but it's super loud. If you were going up against something like that, I, would, I wouldn't mind sprinting, but because it's diesel electrics, I don't want to accidentally run it over and then get shot at from behind because I wasn't paying close enough attention. But at the same time, sprinting might save us some time. Anything? Anything at all? There are vessels nearby. I don't know a proper search pattern for this. What would be a good search pattern? I'm just sort of guessing that they're heading this way. Okay, let's go down. We're going to hit 300 feet, which is a bit dangerous, I know. Aha, perfect. And uh, increase speed to full. I'm going to do 15 knots for a bit. Which makes it very difficult to tell where things are. We're only going to do this for a little while until we hit uh, 21,000 yards from zero two. We're using that as sort of like our uh, our barometer. Okay, now slow down. T five knots. Come up. It's a very weak layer. We got 500 feet. It's excellent. And passing through the layer. Stay here for just a moment. Uh, come to port. Just a little bit. Let's check our baffles. Turn. We want to do uh, zero nine zero. Okay, check our baffles. Turn along, along, and we're now we're going to go down. Check under. No joy go back to uh, whatever course we were following it's around like course 204 I think something like that
300 feet again. And get back up to head full. There's a diesel electric boat out there somewhere. Is causing me great concern. Conditions 445 feet is the sea layer. I assume if we head out this way, the uh, the ocean will get deeper. We'll hit uh, 3,000 yards or 30,000 yards from Sierra 2 before we. Stop our little dash. Maybe not. Maybe I'm being paranoid. Yeah, we'll do it at 27. Because I'm paranoid. Because the last thing I want to do is literally stumble on top of this thing. Nope. Okay, back up to speed. No more layer. Nope, the layer is back. The layer is gone. And the seafloor is coming up to meet us. Wait a second, what? Why? Let's get up. Actually, no, we're going to stay down here. Because there's no layer, so he's not hiding behind anything anymore. So where is he? Layer again. 3,000 yards, slow to one third maneuvering. Pop up. Let's get above the layer. Take a look. Okay, count on 150 feet. Nothing. Let's go up further. Head up for 50 feet. We're going to take another look with the ESM mast. And slow rise. All right. Up ESM mast. signals. We got nothing. Up scope. Let's see what we can see. Absolutely nothing. And there are still vessels nearby. Okay, this is risky. Raise the radar mast. Nothing. Lower the radar mast. Diving officer, make your depth. 150 feet, come right, heading, uh, 245.
continue to depth 250. Zero off the rotor at 230. At two thirds. Can you continue to depth 300? Head full. I'm tempted to ping. Pinging is bad. Pinging is always bad, but I am tempted to do it. Okay, let's make our sprint when we hit uh, 35. We'll slow down again. Depth underneath us is not much. Do you think they went for open water? Still vessels nearby. Where? Where are you? Stop teasing me and let me know where you are so I can kill you. Take a listen. New contact, zero 03, dead ahead. Sonar contact, new contact bearing 238, designate zero 03. Signature, show me Sierra 03. Ah, we found you, we found you! Uh, don't have very good solution on him at all yet. Let's find him. None of these are correct. Nope. That's it. There's the CR3 as contact Foxtrot. Range 7.1 thousand yards, bearing 238. Conditions, he's on our level. Signature. He can't hear us, so I'm assuming we're in his baffles. So let's increase speed. Let's get a little closer to this guy. Yeah, he's negative 50, negative 50. We've got to be in his baffles. So we will continue on this course for a little while, then we'll make a uh, turn to uh, 260. Then back to 230, and then to 200. So that should give us all the data we need. How close to the edge did we find them? So they were escorting them, and they were in trail. So the Foxtrot got by us, but the Whiskies didn't. We could ping him, but that would uh, give us away. We don't want to do that yet. We're in a stern chase right now. I think we're in a stern chase. And, uh, oh, 1,000 yards? Slow to one, head one third. That can't be right. Rig ultra quiet. Conditions? He's like right in front of us.
means we are right in his baffles. Contact is moving away. I think on course 237-ish. And extending. Okay, ahead two-thirds. Zero the planes, zero the planes. I don't want to do that. Up oh, now he's 3.5 away. Come on, sonar, get your shit together. Doing eight knots. So we're going to have to do ten to keep up with him and close. Which means we don't get great solutions, but... Uh, well, we have to build this other ways. can get really close to him, though, because according to this, we're in his baffles. I'm content to do this slowly. Just as long as I don't ram right into him. Range is 3,000 yards, solution is 34%. Betting. Right rudder, 20 degrees, come to 250, now come to 260. We need 30 degrees off. If this works like it does in real life. Okay, second leg. Thirty-five percent is what we're showing. Two point nine thousand yards. Got a thirty-six. Come on. Come to me. Give me a good firing solution. One reason why I'm not just sprinting in to get close to him is because we saw this jump down to 1.9 thousand yards, so he suddenly became a thousand yards close to us. So if I sprint in on him, I don't know what we will, like, will happen to us. Okay, come port. We're going to come to 200. Zero, zero. Solution is 40%. We're doing this slowly because I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to mess this up and die. 41%. 42%. 44%. He's at 2.9 thousand yards. Coming to course 200. Five percent, forty seven percent. Two zero four three two one. Chorus is one nine nine. Solution strength is forty eight percent. Forty nine percent. Come on. Fifty percent solution. Some of our boys are halfway there. Not willing to slow down. We don't want to let him open up the range on us. We are also getting kind of close to the edge. 51% solution. I wonder if there's more than one of these boats. I'd imagine there would be, but maybe not. Listen and learn. All there is to know. So we're going to come again in this direction until we get like kind of this far out except on the other side. And then we'll go straight in on him. And hopefully by then we'll have a good solution. 
Hopefully. No guarantees. Seven percent. Come on. See, this is why Sub Sundays is one episode a week. <laughs> because it's much slower. It's much more slower paced. And I know I've seen other YouTubers who have played this game and they do the 1984 campaign. So they can they can churn along at 33 knots and just roar on into a fight, but but for us, our torpedoes they, they travel at 26 knots. They're, it takes them a long time before they finally get an active signal. So we gotta we gotta play this much slower, which personally I enjoy. I hope you guys enjoy too. That's why we're gonna keep doing this. But uh, it is that is the reason why we're only doing this one day a week, because episodes just take forever. I mean this this may very well be another two hour episode. <laughs> I was like, I want to try to get the episodes down to about 45 minutes for sub Sundays. Yeah, that may not happen. 67% solution. Oh, we've got his course. We've got a, we've got course and bearing. All righty. 71%. Come on, give me more. Give me an actual view of this guy. We have high confidence that he is. Uh, that he is 2.9 thousand yards from us. Conditions tab puts us pretty much on the same level, so we're cruising at about the same same depth here. 75%, 77%. All right, come starboard to 242. Uh, 245. We'll get in right behind him, and then we'll match his course. 80% solution. Okay, this is his course at uh, 218 right there. And now we're going to get back in behind him. Go for 240. That'll give us another leg because it's 30 degrees off. Course is 240. His course is 217. We have an 84% solution, and we are in the target's baffles. 86%. We have a solution. Target. 95%. It's time for a sprint. Let's drive into his baffles. have 20 positive if we go active, and we're listening at positive 2. And we're doing 15 knots while doing that, too. So we will maintain this solution as long as this number stays positive. If this number goes negative, we'll lose the solution and we'll start degrading. But as long as that number's positive, we can, uh, we can hit him. And as long as he stay at the huge negative 50s he's got. This is a Soviet Foxtrot class sub diesel electric boat. He's turning along. Eight knots. He's got three uh, three engines back there. And apparently four torpedoes. Okay, he's got four F firing torpedoes. Oh yeah, I remember that from the book. They were, uh, so Foxtrot skippers have two war shots and two um, decoys. Look, they've got two uh, torpedo decoys located in these tubes and to normal ones. And the, uh, the doctrine they're given is to fire one decoy, one war shot, and then try and evade deep and hard. So yeah. Is he changing depth? Or is that just the slope of the hull? Might be the slope of the hull. We have but a single inline screw. I want to get to about 2,000 yards, and then I want to... I want to send a torpedo right up into him. From behind, where he won't hear it. 
We also, the other advantage to this is, uh, we are listening for any buddies, although we're traveling at 15 knots, so we're not listening all that hard. But he might have buddies. We don't know. I want to get to a point where he's uh, bearing 217 to us, and then we'll turn on his course, and then we'll be right behind him. Now, he can't stay down here for super long. Like, only a couple of days. <laughs> oh, now that I say that. Because I, I play Silent Hunter th uh, 3 and 4. And staying down a couple of days would be amazing. We only get, like, hours. So, advances in battery technology during the Cold War. They can stay down for about three days. And then, uh, the major killer is carbon monoxide buildup. Because they don't have air scrubbers like we do. Well, they, they have certain CO2, like... They spread around this powder, I think it's like a lithium or something, like some lithium hydroxy. I think that, that's got to be wrong, but they have this uh, stuff that they spread around that absorbs CO2. But uh, they do not have full plants like we do, where we basically electrolyze the water, and remove the hydrogen from the oxygen, and then can basically stay under underwater until the end of time. Or at least until the reactor needs to be needs to be recharged, because we have essentially infinite power. Like, essentially, we have infinite electrical power. Coming up behind him, 227, another 10 degrees, and I'll be happy. Now will come in right up on his 6. We're doing nearly twice his speed. And just to double check, so don't want to accidentally run off the map before we torpedo this guy. Driving right into his baffles. Okay. Two, two, four. Two, two, three. He's only doing eight knots. And he's maintaining that speed. Although it has a down arrow, so I don't know if that's he's dropping speed. Two, two, two. Rudder, 10 degrees. Let's start coming to his course. From his perspective, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun 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 It does make you feel scarily powerful to do this. Because he has no idea we're here. He doesn't have a clue. Like, he wishes he had a clue. But he has no idea. Okay, bearing 220. So that way we we fix the course light. So we're right in his baffles. He can't hear us at all. We are invisible. And I want to... I want to match him perfectly. I know that's a pointless endeavor, but I do want to match it perfectly. Two one eight. Oh, our course two one eight. His bearing two one eight. His course two one eight. We are perfectly aligned. Range one point eight thousand yards. Tab. Tube one. Activate at one point. Five. Torpedo away. Slow to one third maneuver. Let's see if we can't keep this wire. Ten knots. Run passive. Okay, we are doing five knots. Luckily, the wire kept. Uh, launching at that speed, one, we could have shot ourselves, and two, the wire could have broken immediately, and that would have sucked. So torpedoes on a passive run. And we're going to let him drift away from us a bit while we do five knots. I've never had an interception go quite this perfectly. So uh, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. 
We snuck into his baffles. We were launched a torpedo while there. He still has no idea, and with any luck, he won't get a clue that this torpedo is on its way. We've got an excellent solution on it. We're at plus 18 for uh, our low frequency, low and medium frequency passives. Of course, we're not going to ping active, although our, our active is almost at the maximum value, which is uh, 50. We're sending a torpedo right up his behind. And <laughs> this torpedo is so slow. Such a small torpedo, too. Torpedo is almost one third of the way there. the end of its route. Range is halfway there. You know what? Let's extend this. Continue on 218. Continue silent running. He doesn't know you're there. He's changing course. Torpedo go active. He's deployed a noisemaker and he's pinging. Torpedoes in a wide search. Torpedo acquired for a moment and then lost him. Come on. Torpedo is searching. Another noisemaker. Torpedo has acquired. We are still invisible. We've lost him, but Torpedo has him. We're at solution 64%, but the Torpedo seems to be on run. Come on. He's still pinging. He's active. He's got us on active. Dumped another noisemaker. We have a good solution. Popped a knuckle, but it's not going to help him. Torpedo's on terminal. 100 yards. Still pinging. Torpedo is 200 yards away.